Today's tip comes from a good friend of mine, Chuck Bender. You may remember Chuck from his time at Popular Woodworking Magazine. He's also a museum quality furniture maker with decades of experience. And sometimes it's just interesting to see how someone who's been making furniture professionally for a long time does things. In this case, it's tapering a leg for a table. Many people use a table saw or the band saw. Chuck uses his jointer. Measure the total length of the taper, which in this case is 14, and divide it in half. So I put a mark at seven, and then square that line across the face of the leg. Now measure from the outside of the leg blank, along that center line, up to the taper line. And in this case, I get three eighths of an inch. That's my depth of cut at the joiner. I run a test block in to check the depth of cut. Push it in, carefully back out, check it with a ruler or a tape measure, make any adjustments as you need to. And when you finally got the depth of cut set exactly where you need it, turn the block around and run it until it just barely touches the revolving cutter head. Then shut off the machine and with a pencil, once the machine has come to a complete and total stop, mark the end of the block. I'm gonna line up that center line with that mark on the fence and use it with the blank in place foot first over the joiner to set a stop block. With the stop block set, all you have to do is run each side of your tapered leg blank. Rotate and do the next side. After you've made that first cut on all the leg blanks, remove the stop block, reverse the leg, pivot it down at the foot, and one pass over the joiner on each tapered side will give you a perfect, absolutely accurate tapered leg every single time. Quick and easy tapered legs at the joiner. Now when Chuck first showed me this, I had two questions, and maybe you're thinking of them too. Is it safe? And is it really easier to do it this way than to just rip it on the table saw or the bandsaw with the jig? On the issue of safety, he explained that the depth of the cut really is no more than you might take with a rotor table or a shaper, less than a half an inch. And the moment the cutter starts removing material, a flat surface is created and it begins to expand on the outfeed table. So you have three points of contact. And while the piece is slanted, it is not unstable. As for the efficiency, it takes little more setup than a table saw taper jig. It leaves crisper, more even shoulders than a table saw blade might, and a smoother surface than you might get with a bandsaw. Now is this for you? Maybe, maybe not. But I love to see Chuck's perspective on things and all the little tips that he has to offer. In fact, I'll link to his blog and his YouTube channel in the notes below this video. You should check him out. It's just a couple of cuts. Yours will be fine, right? They would be if you had your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in because you'd already have your EPA certified hearing protection on while you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts. And you'd be supporting a small family business at the same time. Please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them that you support what we do as well. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.